ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಗುಣಕ್ತು ಸಹ ದೇವ್ಯಂಕರವಾಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀಗಮಸ್ತುಮಾಭೇ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ what we saw last week to sum up <clears throat> we look at the first chart we we recollect the entire thing that we saw last week what is life the flow of experiences the anubhava dhara and uh, an experience consists of two factors that is you the subject and world the object all of us are interested in making our life better the entire human effort is directed towards making life better and better and better we can call it as better life we can call it as quality life whatever we call it it is all about betterment the question is what determines the quality of life your experiences determine the quality of your life the quality of your experiences determines the quality of your life and the experience is of two the subject and the object and the sciences everything deals with the world while vedanta deals with you the subject up to this we have seen last class now we have understood vedanta is talking about you the subject therefore what do we do in the study and analysis we leave the world aside from the experience and we focus on you the subject so from now on we'll be discussing about you the subject you meaning the individual the human being so whenever we talk about you it means a the human being the individual and obviously what it means is a basic clarity of what a human being is is required before we go into an analysis of uh, uh, what life is and everything a, a basic understanding of who is a human being what is the human being made up of is required what is a human being made up of what is known as the human composition the vedantic anatomy there is a scientific anatomy and then there is the vedantic anatomy now we are going to discuss you from the vedantic anatomy standpoint the vedantic anatomy human composition is the body the mind the intellect if you see the chart the board you will see the human being is made up of these three the body the mind the intellect body we mean the physical body that which can be seen and perceived is body then comes the mind and the intellect so for all practical purposes the human being is made up of the body the mind the intellect the grosser part of the human being is the physical body the subtler part of the human being is mind and intellect the grosser part of the human being is the physical body the subtler part of the human being is mind and intellect now when we say gross and subtle what we mean by gross and subtle is gross body physical body is called that way because it can be seen it can be perceived 
you can see it you can perceive it you can see it in another you can perceive it in another that which can be seen and perceived is called physical body the grosser part of the body the grosser part of you the individual the subtler part of the individual is the mind and intellect combined what is known as the subtle personality why do we call this as subtle because only you can understand it only you can know it others doesn't have access to it that's why it's called subtle again i repeat physical body means that which is perceptible to others subtle means that which is perceptible only to you not to others this is mind and intellect this is called the gross body and this is called the subtle body it is very important to understand this because in vedanta we are going to deal with the subtle body the mind and intellect not with the gross body not with the physical body we are narrowing it down first we said vedanta is talking about you the subject the individual in the you we are further narrowing it down by saying what is it talking about it is going to talk about the the mind and the intellect where does this mind and intellect come in this is where if you remember the five points that we discussed in the previous class the choice you remember the five points the cardinal principles of vedanta the five points one is the first is the choice the second is the joy of action the third one is relationship with the world the fourth one is growth through contentment the fifth one is self discovery now all this is of dealing with the mind and the intellect so from the world we have come to you the individual in you we have left to the when we say we have left to the physical body ah uh, see the five these five is of the subtle body the freedom of choice the joy of action by eliminating stress relationship with the world growth through contentment self discovery all that which we saw in detail last class here it is understood that it is part of the mind and intellect now how it is the mind and intellect is a subject matter of today how it is part of the mind and intellect is the subject matter for for today in all these three instruments the body the mind and the intellect it is the intellect that is unique only to a human being we say a human being is composed of he is made up of the body the mind the intellect of the three the intellect is that which is unique to a human being vedanta is the science that is exclusively devoted that is exclusively designed to deal with the intellect telling us what the intellect is and how to deal with the intellect etc now what is the uniqueness if you see uh, an observational fact the next chart if you see the observational fact the observational fact is there are this broadly the species of the world is divided into three the beings the plant the animal the human
don't bother you can see the chart it will be easy to follow it will be easy to follow with the chart don't bother the three beings the plant the animal the human the three instruments the equipments the body the mind the intellect the uniqueness of intellect first what is the uniqueness of the intellect the plant has a body no mind no intellect the animal has a body and mind and no intellect a human being alone has a body the mind the intellect so the human being is distinguished from the rest of the species the human being is different from the rest of the species because because of this unique instrument called intellect the uniqueness of intellect vedanta as i said before vedanta is the subject that is designed to strengthening development of the intellect we will see what it is now with this basic observational facts we get on to the topic for today life is defined by non stop continuous action life means non stop action life means continuous activity there go you can put it mathematically life equals action life equals action whatever points i give don't bother it is we will show it as a board we i will show it in the chart so life equals action therefore action is called the insignia of life action is called the insignia of life in bhagavad gita third chapter he says नहीं कस्य क्षणमपी जातुतिष्ठत्य अकर्मकृत अकर्मकृत मींस इन एक्शन इन एक्टिविटी यू कैन नॉट बी इन एक्टिव इवन फॉर अ स्प्लिट सेकंड देयरफॉर व्हाट इज लाइफ लाइफ इज नथिंग बट ए कंटीन्यूअस नॉन स्टॉप एक्शन एंड दिस एक्शन इज ड्रिवन आइदर by the mind or the intellect this is the first lesson of vedanta all along we have been only giving the introduction we are only the we are only on the doorstep today the first lesson first lesson is you cannot avoid action you cannot move away from action you cannot stop action and if you stop action you wouldn't know that you have stopped action others would know that activity has stopped and they will dispose it therefore life equals action and this action of a human being is driven by these two the mind and the intellect just get used to these two words huh? mind and intellect most probably we most probably we may define it today and we will continue it into the next session also for rest of the nine weeks you are going to keep listening only to these two words the mind and an intellect by that time you you come to the fifth session you will scream and say enough of this word intellect sir let us talk something something else because it will be too much to it will be too much to handle get used to these two terms that's why we are we are repeating the words and then we will define it later because once you are comfortable with the words definitions become easy to understand so first you get comfortable with the word therefore i am introducing the words first 
the mind the intellect the mind the intellect action is driven either by the mind or the intellect and wherever whenever we talk about intellect there is a small uh, diversion here there is a small diversion here wherever whenever we talk about intellect the word intellect is synonymously misunderstandingly used with intelligence the word intellect is always synonymously used with intelligence in vedanta we do not use the word intellect to mean intelligence it means you got to distinguish between what is intelligence and what is intellect you got to distinguish between the two what is intelligence and what is intellect intelligence means information intellect means the information digested and become part of you again i repeat intelligence equals information intellect is that information digested and has become part of you what is the simple difference between intelligence and intellect consider this example here is a person who talks about the ill effects of smoking consider this person here is a person who is giving a whole day seminar a whole day talk on the ill effects of smoking he comes up with his six hours he talks about the ill effects of smoking he comes up with pointers he comes up from medicines he comes up from psycho from what all possible angles you can he can convince you about the ill effects of smoking he he talks before the start of the session he is so tensed he is worried whether the session will go properly or not all those who came yesterday last week have they come today or will they come today even if they come what will be all the worry he started having before the i am not having that worry i am saying that fellow had that worry at the end of the first session at the end of the first session there is a break he rushes out of the seminar picks up a cigarette and smokes everybody follow he is so intelligent listening to him people got convinced and quit smoking and this person is continuing to smoke this is intelligence from this what do you derive the definition of intelligence intelligence is that which you have and may be beneficial to others but of no use to you this is intelligence again i repeat intelligence means you have lot of information you have lot of facts and those information those knowledge those facts may be beneficial to others but is of no use to you this is called intelligence just as the person listening to this guy hundreds quit smoking and he continues to smoke what would you call that person because he has all the data he has all the facts he is able to convince people to quit smoking but he is not able to tell his own mind stop smoking vedanta says that facet in you which is the intellect if it is developed then it is of help to you so just a small uh, clarity here because why we have to take this small detour is because whenever the english word intellect is used 
wherever whenever we use the english word intellect it is always misunderstood with intelligence to follow now another way to understand intelligence and intellect is this this comes in the original vedantic text not that we are not original original vedantic text means sanskrit text original sanskrit text there he says when somebody comes with the problem you will be able to offer a solution using your intelligence when you are faced with the same problem you cannot use that information to solve it for yourself that is the difference between intelligence and intellect again i repeat when you have intelligence what will happen when somebody comes to you you will be able to when 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 somebody comes to you you would be able to you will be able to understand the you will be able to help that person you will be able to understand and help that person when you are faced with the same dilemma you will not know how to handle it because vedanta says it is because you have only intelligence and no intellect so human being is unique now we are coming back to the topic what is intellect distinguishing itself from intelligence intelligence is nothing but skill intelligence is nothing but you acquiring a skill that is intelligence you can be skillful in one subject in one area or you can be skillful in a few areas you can be a very uh, skillful person in the office and you can be a very skillful cook also and you can be a very skillful driver also so intelligence is nothing but if you see the equations the next one it is come there the first one skill is what we call as intelligence and how do you acquire a skill you acquire a skill by doing something repeatedly that is why repetition is insisted in education again it is skill is intelligence and how do you acquire that skill you acquire that skill by doing something repeatedly that's why the the simple english well, the the simple english quotation says practice makes a man perfect what is practice means doing something repeatedly now when you do something repeatedly you acquire a kind of skill and that skill is called intelligence whereas intelligence is not whereas intelligence is not intellect we are just building up the curiosity to know what this intellect is sir first we are saying what all not intellect is and then you will come to say what intellect is so skill is what intelligence and how do you acquire a skill you acquire a skill by doing something repeatedly repetition gains a kind of gives you a kind of knowledge technically we call it as intelligence and intelligence is not intellect what is the difference when something goes out of the pattern you will not know how to deal with it that's where intellect comes intelligence is a very useful to intelligence is very important as long as the pattern remains the same 
if the pattern changes intelligence will be stunned intelligence will be confused it will not know how to deal with it and why we need an intellect now now we understand the importance of intellect life being a dynamics changing situations not being static you need to have this intellect so that when something comes out of the pattern you would know how to deal with it for that you need an intellect what in the modern day they call as thinking out of the box no every generation uh, at least this you must understand every generation what it does is concept will remain the same they will discover new vocabulary that's all discovering new vocabulary doesn't make it okay, what is the concept this is the concept this is the concept and what is the concept when that you can mute everybody and just unmute me only don't mute me also and if somebody uh, when we throw up time for clarifications if anybody has we will unmute them so the necessity of intellect comes when life throws up situations which is out of box that where intellect is needed intelligence work with a pattern sometimes if you have seen people giving directions sometimes you see people giving directions they will have one point one of my friend here will we used to give directions you know at that time uh, we give directions using the movie theaters as the reference point yeah that's so why we all used to give directions now google and all has come we don't those times we, why we use movie theaters as a reference point anybody on the road side will know that place so there used to be that uh, um, there used to be this movie things i'm talking about the chennai road huh? i don't know how many of you are all from here you may not understand the example but doesn't matter everybody will have this experience i was asking you no know, just they just irritated the fellow hey alankar how do we go to alankar theater go to first he said go to devi paradise and then walk backwards 200 meters you find alankar theater hey but the way you are saying you have to cross alankar theater and go to devi paradise and why do you have to come back and well says no no i know only devi paradise all directions will start from there only this is intelligence he can give directions he can help you out he can help you out to get to that place but such a long windy sometimes not sometimes most of the times you end up getting misguided directed wrongly that is the difficulty of intelligence this is the difficulty of intelligence what is the difficulty of intelligence it is very good it is very useful it is very essential as long as the pattern doesn't change are you all okay till now how comes the knowledge life doesn't give you that luxury life doesn't give you the luxury of the same pattern it keeps it keeps changing all the time it means you need to know how to quickly adapt and move intelligence will not be able to do that because anything outside the pattern intellect intelligence will not know how to handle it that is where intellect comes in and vedanta is something that is designed to 
understand what this intellect is. And what is intelligence? Intelligence is a kind of herd instinct. Intelligence mm -hmm. is a kind of herd instinct, it belongs to the group. You see the chart now that will be shown, taken from one of Swamiji's books, which we will be talking about later. It is there in one of his books. We have taken that from the books. A newspaper clipping that talks about the herd instinct. 1,500 sheep take suicide leap of cliff. Intelligence is herd instinct. What does herd instinct here means? What happened in this story here? Story means real. The newspaper has reported it. That's where you can see the newspaper, Dubai Mirror, Sunday, July 10, 2005. All that you can see because it is it's a real thing that happened. Conveys the point so beautifully, which Swamiji uses it in all his all his talks and his books. What happened here? Thousand five hundred sheep were grazing in Turkey. They were grazing in Turkey on the hills. One sheep that was grazing at the edge of the cliff slipped and fell. One sheep that is grazing at the edge of the cliff slipped and fell. Rest of the 1,499 sheep jumped, thinking that is the path to go. Following a set mechanical routine pattern is intelligence. And we all understand growth in life comes, and we all understand growth in life comes, betterment in life comes through what is called as thinking out of the box, what is called as creativity, what is called as originality. You can use any word. All this is function of intellect. And growth happens only when you have developed this ability. It is nice to hear and say be original. It is nice to hear and say be creative. The question is how? You can't go to a creative course, no. You can't, you, you can't go and join a course to be creative. You develop the intellect and you can break the pattern. And when the pattern is broken, which means you move away from the herd instinct, all your life actions are guided by this intellect. Your experiences are good. Life becomes good because the intellect is that which helps you to adapt yourself to all changing situations. Intelligence cannot adapt. It is intellect that can adapt. In the book Vedanta Treaties, you find a portion where the great scientist is quoted, Dr. Jordan. He talks about the growth of species, the survival of species. He says, the species that survive are those who can adapt faster, better. COVID-19 is still surviving with new, new variants, no? It is defying all collective human intelligence put together. Adaptability, that's all. Just, it, 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 it is so adaptable, so, ad so adaptable. I'm not glorifying that, huh? I'm not praising that. Just giving that as an example, because we are all so frustrated by this 
covid 19 was uh, including me i'm waiting when will i get out of the house survival is dependent on adaptability intelligence will not know how to adapt and when you do not know how to adapt that is where the emotions take over the mind takes over and you go through and you experience stress strain etc 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 all, all that is there go vedanta comes and says as you are developing the intelligence remember there is the thing called intellect which is more vital than intelligence also got to be developed simultaneously vedanta is not saying don't develop intelligence vedanta is saying as you are focusing on intelligence as you are gathering intelligence gather develop your intellect now comes the all important question now comes the all important question why develop the intellect for we are all happily surviving without even knowing that there is a thing called intellect the whole world uh, is happily surviving without this and without even knowing there is this thing called intellect why develop the intellect that becomes the important question because if you can answer this question why develop the intellect you will be able to survive rest of the eight sessions because it is answering this question why develop the why develop the intellect what is the necessity to develop the intellect you need to develop the intellect because you got to resolve the paradox of life and act why you need to develop the intellect oh yeah venkat has charts for everything he has a chart why develop the intellect you need to develop the intellect because you got to resolve the paradox of life and then act now if you connect it to what we said previously life equals actions actions is designed by the uh, actions are driven either by the mind intellect i'm not uh, rewinding i'm saying connected to that then you will understand the flow then you will understand how mathematical how scientific and how logical this knowledge of vedanta is why develop the intellect you need to develop the intellect because you got to resolve the paradox of life and act what is the paradox of life that that you got to resolve that you got to resolve and act what are the paradoxes of life that you got to resolve and act so that your life becomes better that you need an intellect for the paradoxes of life is this first paradox is the importance of education is understood by the educated correct the importance of education is understood by educated logically speaking the importance of education must be understood by the illiterate uneducated no the importance of education is understood by whom the one who is educated the one who is educated stresses the importance of education to the one who is not educated why because the educated is one who understands the importance of education from this you derive the corollary what the importance of intellect is understood by one who has an intellect if the importance of education is understood by the un uneducated carefully follow this is why it's called a paradox venkat chat out konjam vella vandirumalla if the importance of education 
has to be understood by the if education if the importance of education is understood by the uneducated what will happen life will be very smooth and comfortable how Five o'clock in the morning, all children will wake up. By six thirty, they will be ready to go to school. For the child to go to school at seven o'clock, the mother wakes up at five o'clock and keeps telling the child, "Wake up, wake up, wake up." What time the child will wake up? Six fifty. And the bus comes at seven o'clock, and that ten minutes is the Kurukshetra, isn't it? Fight. Everything is done in a hurry, and this and and then six fifty nine the bus has come onto the road, and the honking one socks is missing, and by the time you get that one socks and put the child into bus. See, all that got over for me only last year. Eh? I was doing all that till last year. That's why I know. I was waiting for my daughter Abada when she will grow up so that you don't have to search for that one socks every day. The importance of education, the the importance of education is understood by the educated. That is why they have to. Tell the uneducated repeatedly about it. If it is not a paradox, life will be very smooth and easy. It is the paradox. The second paradox is this. If you understand these three paradoxes of life, you will start searching for Vedanta. we need not come again and again and again you will start searching for it because you know that there is this disease and you know and you start searching for medicine you are not searching for medicine is because disease is not known understood what is it life is a paradox and you need an intellect to resolve this paradox and what are the paradoxes there are three paradoxes one of the one of the other i'll explain and for today's session this is the topic the paradoxes is the topic the importance of intellect is understood by one who has an intellect that's why swami ji keeps on saying i'm talking 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 nobody understands the importance including the speaker he says doesn't understand the importance of intellect one who has an intellect understand the importance of intellect it's a paradox just as the importance of education is understood by one who is educated the second paradox of life in the increasing order of difficulty it comes the increasing order of subtlety also you can see the second paradox of life is all that comes natural to a human being is detrimental all that is evolutionary is through knowledge and effort so second paradox that's why intellect is needed again i repeat ipo board porumalla the second paradox all that comes natural to a human being is detrimental all that is evolutionary is through knowledge and effort this is this is the second paradox and this paradox is that which we need to know how to how to resolve and people use the word natural and get away with saying that all the detrimental factors they get away with vedanta comes and says all that comes natural to a human being is detrimental how do we understand this i'll give you examples you'll understand to get angry is natural isn't it to get angry is natural to have gratitude requires knowledge and effort 
if gratitude is natural and anger requires knowledge and effort, there is no paradox. Are you able to follow this example? See, to get angry is natural. Does that mean anger is correct? It's not. And to have gratitude is thankfulness. Gratitude means thankfulness. Now, to have gratitude is not natural. It doesn't come naturally. It comes through a lot of knowledge and effort. It means what? All that comes natural to a human being is detrimental. This is what in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he talks about it using two words, Amrudam and Visham. In the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he uses two words to talk about this. He calls it as Amrutam and Visham. Amrutam means nectar, Visham means poison. Or nectar means that which is beneficial to you. Poison means that which is detrimental to you. Are you able to follow? Nectar means that which is beneficial to you. That which brings you welfare is nectar. Poison is that which brings about destruction to you, which hurts you, which harms you, that destroys you. Here comes the paradox. What is the paradox? All that is detrimental to you is so good in the beginning, painful at the end. All that is beneficial to you is painful in the beginning and nectarine at the end. It's a paradox. That's why you need an intellect. If good things are good in the beginning and bad things are bad in the beginning, nobody needs guidance. Nobody needs intellect. A human being alone needs this. Why? Because of this paradox. All that is evolutionary, if you see, you can give any examples. I've been doing these topics for quite a while now. And, and in all the educational universities that I go and talk. The second point becomes such a to topic for generating debate and, and discussion. And provokingly, I say, all that comes naturally is detrimental. It means to be natural is detrimental. It's a provocation, that's all. It's a simple intellectual provocation. For what? To make you realize that you need an intellect because you got to solve this paradox. The third paradox is this. The third paradox is this. What you see is not what it is. This is the third paradox. What you see is not what it is. If what you see is what it is, it's not a paradox. But what you see is not what it is. That is why in all languages we say, don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you hear. Because what you see is not what it is. In all languages, I have heard experts in all, at least the Indian language. When I say all languages, mean, I mean seven, eight Indian languages I meant. I have asked this. Do you have any quotation like this in your language? And everybody says yes. Don't go by what your eyes see. Why? Because what your eyes see is not what it is. Don't go by what you hear because what you hear is not what it is. In the words of Shakespeare, one may smile and smile and smile and yet be a villain. One may smile and smile and smile and yet be a villain. You need an intellect not to get carried away by what you see. I'll give you another example, it will be easy to follow. 
all parents are concerned about the welfare of the kids, no? the small kids, three-year-old, four-year-old. Why are we so concerned about the welfare? We are so concerned, we are so worried about the welfare. Why? Anybody on the roadside gives a chocolate, the child will think is the friend and walk behind that, walk behind that person, no? Isn't it? That's why when we have children, we have to, they, they, so why? Because child believes that it goes by what it sees. What it sees, anybody gives the chocolate, anybody gives an ice cream, it is very clear what that, that person is your friend, that person is your beneficiary, that person is your friend. The child believes what it sees is what it is, in that it, it is hurt. As an adult, we are supposed to have an intellect and understand what, what you see is not what it is. If life doesn't have these paradoxes, all that we need is a skill, earn a living and continue to live happily. Intelligence alone is enough. If life is not a paradox, intellect is not at all required. If life is not a paradox, are you able to follow? Intellect is not at all required. If life is not a paradox, you can just acquire a skill. And with that skill, you can earn a living and live life happily, blissfully. No worry, no anxiety, no stress, no strain, no depression, no nothing. And the entire world is believing in acquiring a skill and earning a living and that earning a living itself will make your life better and your life doesn't become better at all. Why? That skill, that education doesn't teach you that life is a paradox and it doesn't teach you how to prepare to face that paradox. Vedanta is that preparation. That's why wherever we go, we keep harping on this knowledge Vedanta as universally needed by everyone. Not everybody needs to know engineering. Not everybody needs to know medicine. Not everybody needs to know carpentry. Not everybody needs to know cooking. But everybody needs this Vedanta. Why? Because everyone faces this paradox of life and the stress and strain and worry and anxiety is because of not able to deal with this paradox. Intellect is that which helps you to deal with the paradox. And where is where are you going to learn this? Schools will not teach you because you can't blame the schools. Why? Because that's not their area. You can't say, why not universities teach? You can't say, I'm going to, uh, when I go to university, I go to learn architecture. No. I didn't go to university to learn how to resolve the paradox. Why the parents don't teach, schools don't teach, universities don't teach, why parents don't teach? They themselves are caught in this paradox so much that they themselves don't know how to resolve it for themselves. How can they teach? So, all those who can teach you is not aware of this. The schools, the universities, the parents, the society, no one. Vedanta, having known this since the birth of humanity, has brought out this knowledge because it knew society will go through changes, technological changes. I'm not calling it as advancement. I'm only calling it as change. Technological advancement, material uh, changes, technological changes, all these will change. But what will not change? Paradoxes don't change. Paradoxes remain the same. 
and this parrot, and you need to have this knowledge to handle this paradox. Whoever can handle the paradox well is what we call as a strong person, a mature person. Who do we call as a strong person? Who do we call as a mature human being? Who are the persons that we look up to? A person who can handle this paradox. Not only he can handle it within himself, he can be a beacon light guiding the others too. That is why you got to strengthen the intellect. That is why you need to understand that there is the thing called intellect and you got to strengthen the intellect. In the last 55 minutes, so much we have spoken. Summarize into three words. Intellect to resolve the paradox of life. Sir, you could have told that at 10, one only. One hour you could have saved, no? Why, why spoke so much for one hour to, to say only one sentence? To, it needs that much of elaboration. What are the paradoxes that we saw, if we solve, I will just show you the board and this is the subject matter for the next week. What are the paradoxes of life that we want, that we are aiming to, that we are aiming to solve so that our life becomes better? What are those paradoxes? I will show you the chart today, just see it. Just to whip up your appetite for the next two sessions. This is the. We have divided life into seven aspects material, physical, action, relationship, knowledge, intellect, religion. Better life means attend, having attended to all these levels the material aspect, the physical aspect, the action the relationship, the knowledge, the intellect, the religion, philosophy. What the paradox is, which, which is the subject matter for the next week, you will see in it very clearly, the goal is clear, but what you do is completely opposite of it. That's the paradox you need to resolve, your life becomes better. The goals of life is clear. What you do to get to that goal is completely opposite. Which we will take it up in the next class. For today, you just got to understand this. Why I am showing that is because you can choose whether to come or not no, next week. You Just to say one word. Last class, there was so it was so dramatic and so fast and so this thing, and today it is like oh my God, so different. What is it? The intellect to resolve the paradox. And what are the paradoxes? If you deal with it, what are the paradoxes? If you know how to handle your life, your experiences are better. And when your experiences are better, life is better. Having explained this, then we will go into the definition of what intellect is. Not before that. Why? Even to understand the importance of it, you need to know. To know the definition of it, you need to know the importance of it. Not in a very generic way, not in a very general way. How does it help to resolve the paradox in each and every aspect of life? And then you ask, what do, where do we learn this? That is this knowledge, Vedanta. This is how it will go for the next couple of sessions. With this, we conclude for today. Any clarifications, if you have, you can, I think there is a symbol, the hand symbol, you can put up, you can, you can, you can put that, you will take up those 
clarifications for a few minutes at the end of every session. Last week I just bombarded because I just wanted to say whatever I wanted to say and wind up. From today onwards, we change the pattern slightly. From third week, fourth week onwards, I know that I will not be talking at all because so many things that I said reflect on all this for a week about these paradoxes, about the three paradoxes of life, reflect on this for a week. You will develop so much of not clarity, confusion. And from confusion comes clarity. From Remember, this is how knowledge grows. From ignorance to confusion to clarity. From ignorance, you cannot come to clarity without confusion. So we give pointers for thinking. You think over this for a week. And then we continue with the paradoxes of life in the next session. Thank you. Oh, somebody has raised. Sudha. Yes. Wait till we unmute you. Ah, yes, Sudha. Pranam Guruji. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, I, I just wanted to ask you uh, hmm. when you said what is natural is determinal, hmm. uh, I was just thinking uh, hmm. to love, to be loved, these are all things that come very naturally to an individual to care. You know, all these uh, qualities yeah. come naturally to you. Uh, yeah. how, how, can, how can they be determinal is something I was just wondering. Yeah, correct. I would seek your uh, clarity on yeah, this. Definitely, definitely. Clarification on this. Yeah. I was hoping somebody will ask this. Huh? I wanted to say this as a question and answer, but I was waiting somebody will hope. I was hoping somebody will ask this question. It is Sir. very difficult to love. It is easy to get attached. It is natural to get attached. Lot of knowledge and effort is required to love. And the misunderstanding is attachment is seen as love. Okay. I'll, I'll quickly explain. Yes, yes, I do understand. Yes. Now, to get attached is natural. Yes. To love requires knowledge and effort. Okay. Okay. Because, I understand. Yes. Ah, correct. Huh? You understand. I agree. Okay. I agree fully. I agree fully. Correct. That's all. <laughs> Other clarity. Just two words is enough. You know, you understand. Okay, yes. If, if love is natural, if love okay. is natural, there will be so much of harmony everywhere. Okay. If love is natural. If Sir, doesn't, is natural, doesn't gratitude come naturally to individuals? If gratitude okay. comes naturally, there will not be any asking at all. Gratitude means what? I have I realize that I have in abundance so much that I that uh, 24 hours is in 24 hours will go in saying thank you only. Thank you only. I will have no time for asking. Okay. Gratitude also doesn't come naturally. Like for example, okay, simple example I'll give you. The father and mother does so much. Yes. The school teacher does so much. The spouses mm. serve each other a lot, no doubt. Mm. Just one thing going wrong is enough to upset all that, no? Yes. If gratitude was there, what will happen? That the, you mean to say the, the gratitude that gets generated in individuals are so, so temporary and uh, conditional? The gratitude that is developed is that which will help you to overlook the inefficiency of the other, the deficiencies of the other, and you can accommodate and love. Oh, yes. Are you able to follow? Yes, if yes. No, Precisely. If there is no gratitude, uh, I cannot accept the... Uh, I, I can never be affectionate to another. Okay. So I will be so irritated at the inefficiency. I will be so hmm. frustrated. I will feel like... Yeah, I feel like um, taking the gun and shooting everybody. <laughs> that correct, is... Correct. I understand, sir. I, I really understand. Yes. Ah. 
Very good. Sir, Very I have good. one more, one more question to ask. If you would permit me. Yeah, please, please, please. You are permitted. Uh, sir, uh, you you said Vedanta is very essential to uh, develop intellect in an individual. It is it is uh, it is more needed for the present uh, civilization or whatever. Yes. I mean, should should it not be a part of uh, uh, formal education in that case? You are, right. you are perfectly right. That's what we are struggling. You don't know how much of effort we are putting as an institution to bring it up. And it is. So do, we, do we have any say in this national education policy which the government is floating? I don't. That part of it, there is absolutely no recognition by the government bodies at all. I'm telling you. See, I, I'm teaching all this in the in the universities in Chennai for the last seven years. I'm teaching this. And every year, this difficulty is the same. They will tell me that, sir, what you are saying and all is very good. We can give you one hour, sir. <laughs> okay. One hour, because our schedule is so tight, our timetable is so tight. And do you know even that one hour they give? Mm. Some professor who takes a break, will, will, they mm. will ask us to fill it in. I, mm. I still go and fill it in. I still go and fill it in. I don't mind doing that because any mm. child exposed this word Vedanta, we are doing. And uh, we are not complaining. We are not criticizing. We are happy doing it. And we know the efforts that we put is not going to go for waste. It, it, will, it will show the result. It may not show immediately. It may not show tomorrow. But the dedicated efforts will not go wait it will come and when it comes it will be beneficial to the society is it okay ma yes sir thank you so much sir yeah thank you very much thank you venkat is there anything else no yeah with this we conclude for today and we continue next week same time 10 o'clock